All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. Guys, you are in for a real treat. So one of the problems with Chronically Stephanie's channel is sometimes she skipped around a couple years at a time. The last we saw of her, she admitted that she was smoking and drinking, but she was trying to fix things. Now we're going to fast forward, believe it or not, two years. This is Stephanie with her new nose, right? Although it's two years old now. And her new look, she looks absolutely gorgeous, but... Even though we think we might have gotten away from some of the issues with her weight loss surgery, we're about to find out the truth. So let's see where she is now. Hey, it's Stephanie. It is 2017, and I'm here to give you an update on my gastric bypass, Ruin Y, that I had about three years ago. Uh, my highest weight was 250-something, and my lowest weight, I got down to the two to the 100 in teens. Um, my current weight is 152. Um, I had some pretty good years. Um, my weight went up and down um, these past few years. I My highest I got back up to was 175, and that was this past uh, end of October. And recently I just lost... Um, just about 25 pounds uh, in about a month, actually. And um, I didn't really try to. So that's kind of, you know, raised a little bit of an alarm with me. And um, so I'm going to the doctor about that. Um, I've also had uh, some problems, again, with food getting stuck. And so I think I see a scope in my future. We all know that I'm no, no stranger to scopes. So that uh, appointment is today. So I thought, why not do an update since my journey seems to be mostly about the complications of gastric bypass. Um, unfortunately, that is my journey. Um, let's see, also... Um, I've been starting to have the, the nausea again. Um, after every time I eat, I get very nauseous. And so I'm taking motion sickness pills, which help a lot. Um, but unfortunately I shouldn't have to do that after I eat all the time. So, yeah, and I just have pain in my stomach. It's like this pain where it feels like a gas bubble at the top of my ribs but it doesn't go away. Um, it just it just kind of sits there and aches. Um, and then sometimes I feel like I'm really, really hungry. Um, and then I eat and then it just hurts, but I still feel like I need to feed it. It does, it, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I need to get that checked out. So I'm going to the doctor in about a half hour, but I'm really, really nervous. Um, it's triggering a lot of really bad memories for me. I went through a lot. Um, if you go back to my past videos, you'll see uh, what I went through. And um, I'm realizing now that it was really kind of more traumatic for me than I thought. Um, when I got better, I think I just, I felt like I just left that behind. And um, I think I blocked it out. And now that I have to go back there, um, it's terrifying but I hope everything will be okay but you know they say that um, years out after gastric bypass um, is when things start going wrong and they say years after gastric bypass is when things start going wrong now she's gonna say here in a second here that that's something she heard off YouTube so it's neither here nor there and take it with a grain of salt but <clears throat> we're going to start to see some of the real terrors that can come with surgeries that don't end up going so well long-term. 
<clears throat> this is one of the problems that I think I kind of have with people that are having successful weight loss surgeries because there's a ton of successes. But I think some of these problems are so gnarly that a lot of people don't do YouTube channels about them. So let's finish up with what she has to say. And they is what I've heard from people and what I've read on the internet. So I take it with a grain of salt. So that's where I'm at today. Um, hopefully you won't see an update uh, uh, from me laying in a hospital bed. Um, dear God, please. But, oh, another complication that I've had is that I have chronic dry mouth. Um, which has affected my teeth. Um, I've had a ton of dental work as a result. It's a uh, chronic dry mouth creates a uh, habitat for um, decay of your teeth. Um, so I've had. So imagine you have a situation where you have acid reflux like a crazy person, right? You have a ton of acid reflux. It's in the back of your mouth. You wake up with gnarly morning breath because you have this acid reflux situation, which she obviously has, right? Every evening she's been having this situation for a long time where she feels nauseous. Combine that with the vitamin depletion that a lot of people go through with these surgeries. You literally have to take vitamins for the rest of your life, okay? And then now you combine it with the lack of saliva um, being formed in her mouth you really have a situation for tooth decay. And oh, by the way, tooth decay is contagious. Uh, extensive dental work. Two weeks ago, I just had eight hours straight of dental work done. And two weeks before that, I had three root canals done. And about a month before that, I had two root canals done. Um, it's just ongoing. My mouth is like a money pit for... Um, for oral work done and uh that is one of the uh downfalls of gastric bypass um but that, that one i hear is pretty common the, the dry mouth that one i hear is pretty common the dry mouth you know it's funny i don't hear that do you look at look up 15 or 20 gastric bypass great stories, right? And they'll talk a little bit about a little diarrhea and a little bit of blockage, right? You don't hear that a lot of people end up having extensive tooth decay and tooth damage, right? Now, with that being said, I still think we need to have weight loss surgery and Ozempic and Wagovi for certain folks. But if you're 250 pounds, give us 90 days here. We want, we're willing to walk with you. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit longer. Guess what? She was saying a prayer that uh, the situation with her tummy ache wouldn't be too bad. Now we're going to find out where we're going with it. Hey guys, it's Stephanie. I just wanted to give you an update. I went to my appointment and things were not good. I have a large blockage in my lower intestine. So I have to have surgery um, in the next day or two, and, uh, I'm just outside waiting for my husband to get my prescriptions filled. Um, the biggest prescription I'm waiting for is for my Advan, because my anxiety is off the charts. I don't know if I can do this again. I felt like I, like, left in April and everything was okay, and I was okay for years, and everything was fine. And now I go back there, and I knew going back there was going to be bad, and it is bad, and my fear is that it's all starting over again, and I'm not sure I can take it. So, that's where I'm at. I just wanted to give you an update. Um, so, yeah, I'm not in a hospital bed, but yeah, I, it's emergent, but not so urgent that they couldn't wait a day or two to get me in, but I'm not feeling too good. Um, it explains why I've dropped the weight and why I haven't been feeling well. So at least we have some answers, which is good. 
Well, 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 all of a sudden she has to go back to Michigan to get some stuff done. And when she gets there, she realizes that it's going to be some major stuff done. She needs to get surgery apparently within the next day or two. So at this point, I think we can all agree that you really have to at least give a second thought to doing some of these procedures when it comes to weight loss. This is why it's so important if you're a medium-sized person, let's catch yourself before you get large. The larger you are, it just looks like the more complications that you can have in life. With that being said, let's grab our shoes. Let's go for a walk. Hey, this is Jesse. And I just wanna let you guys know that whether you do weight loss surgery or whether you try it on your own without surgeries, it always involves very hard work, time, and dedication. My thinking is, is it a game plan that we have to do for a month or two? Or is it a game plan that we should do for the rest of our lives? I think the answer is obvious. I hear your comments every day, and I want new people that are here for the first time to know that we drink water, we walk, and we avoid sugar because we want to avoid things like weight loss surgery and injections to stay healthy. So I'd like for you to join us. I can do this. You can do this. We can do this. Let's do this. So the last couple of videos that I've uploaded, I was trying to be a little bit goofy and kind of laugh with, with you guys, hopefully. Hopefully you guys found it a little bit funny. But it might come across as I've been poking fun at Chronically Stephanie and maybe even her husband, Mark. But the reality is it's just a, an effort to try to make the show a little bit more fun. The reality that I can't uh, get over, I say the word reality a lot, I apologize. Let me see if I can get that word out of my vocabulary for a while. What I've noticed that bothers me about weight loss surgery and I can't put this on the doctors, I have to put this on the patient. So I'm not mad at the surgeon, not mad at the weight loss surgery, as much as uh, I'm a little upset with the people going in for weight loss surgery. Yes, being healthy is a component of their choice. Yes, having energy for their kids, like Stephanie said, is a, is a part of, of the reasoning behind it. But then, what happens when people start to lose weight? they do start to get a little vain. There is some vanity there. There's just no doubt about it, right? She goes on TV, or on, not TV, but on YouTube, and speaks to her husband, Mark, and the number one thought for the first question off of the top of her mind is, what body part of mine do you like the best? I mean, I don't know. To me, that shows that when we're in our 30s, there's still a piece of us that's kind of like a 20-year-old or an 18-year-old, right? I don't think somebody in their 40s would say that same thing to their husband as their number one question. So it takes me to this point. At her highest, she was 250 pounds. I think that would equate to a man being about 300 pounds. If a guy was 300 pounds, let's say a buddy of mine, 300 pound Joe, comes up to me and he says, hey, I'm thinking about weight loss surgery. I would tell them, why don't you at least try a gym membership and an exercise and diet program first? And I'm sure Joe would come back with, well, I have tried that, you know, I wanna go this route, right? But the reality is, at 250 pounds, and I believe she said she was 5'5 five five or 5'6, five you know, if she was four foot 11 and 250 pounds, it would be much worse, right? At five foot five, 250 pounds, and keep in mind, before her surgery, she got herself down to 225 pounds. That means she lost about 30 pounds, which is a pretty decent percentage of her body weight. Did she really need to get weight loss surgery at all? I would argue no. And I would argue that if weight loss surgeons had a minimum weight requirement of 300 for women, and 350 for men, they would probably be out of business. There's just not enough big people that get that large. 
that can supply all of the weight loss surgeons in the world. Now, if you're a weight loss surgeon and you totally disagree with me, put it in the comments. What I'm saying is we need to have weight loss surgeons. My surgeon does weight loss uh, surgery and I think the world of him. And I, I think the world of him regardless, but the reality is, oh, there's that word again, these people don't necessarily need weight loss surgery. If you've ever bounced up and down on your weight and you've ever been up in the 250 range if you're a female and maybe now you're at 180 so you still don't feel like you want to be where you're at, but you were at 250, do you agree or disagree that that's a good weight to go get weight loss surgery? Because I just can't help but think that it seems a little iffy for a person that's 250 pounds to get weight loss surgery. And then if you flip it from the surgery to the injections, right? We have Ozempic, we have Wagovi, and there's a couple of other uh, names that semaglutide injections go under. And you also, if you take into account the places like Mexico, where people can go and get a surgery done for cheaper, right? So now you have people that, in my opinion, might not be obese enough to validate getting weight loss surgery. And now they're jumping across the border and getting a surgery in Mexico. And there's a YouTube video where a couple ladies actually discuss the pros of getting your surgery done in Mexico. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's a handful of really world-class surgeons in the country of Mexico. But what are the odds you're gonna find that world-class surgeon, you know? What are the odds that out of the 50 weight loss surgeons in Mexico, where maybe 10 or 15 of them are world class and the other 35 are iffy, you know? What are the odds you're going to get one of the good ones? And if you get one of the bad ones, are they up for repercussions if, if something wrong happens? Do you get your money back? Does it matter if you get your money back if your life is ruined, you know? And again, you're across the border. I just can't imagine if I'm a professional in Mexico and an American reaches out and says, hey, I'd really like my money back or I'd like you to fix this or that and the other. I don't see how they're obligated to do so legally, you know, unless there's specific laws in Mexico that, that give you safety as a, as a client. I think that could be scary and dangerous. So again, I think we need weight loss surgeons. If you're gonna go get a surgery, of course I would recommend you do it on this side of the border. I would never recommend you do much of anything in Mexico, you know? And uh, I remember when I was five, I went down to Mexico and we got a bag of candy for a penny. And I think I got a haircut for like a dollar or something like that. Very inexpensive because of the exchange rate, right? And the Mexican country in our country, they do a lot of trade back and forth, right? But again, if you're going down there to get a weight loss, uh, to get weight loss surgery or to get prescriptions, everybody deep down knows you're doing it at your own risk, you know, including you. So again, if you could tell me in the comments, what weight in your opinion is acceptable where you can understand a person getting weight loss surgery because at this point I, I can't really see a person getting it unless they are excessively obese and then what's interesting is apparently one of the things you have to do in order to get the surgery is you have to go through a little diet and exercise routine and because these people that are going through the surgery are so gung-ho about the surgery a lot of times they end up losing 20 or 30 pounds in a month before their surgery. Tell me that's not wild. They're literally getting on the routine that's going to take them far post-surgery. They're doing it pre-surgery, but they're not giving themselves any credit for it. You know, they're not giving themselves any credit for it. And when you find out that you're gonna to have to take vitamins for the rest of your life, when you find out that you're gonna to have to watch your protein, and by the way, according to what I'm hearing, 
it behooves every person that does an injectable or goes through weight loss surgery, it behooves you to actually go to the gym and lift weights. So now you have to ask yourself, if you're going to do all of this stuff anyway, why not do it before your surgery and just cancel that surgery and just keep on doing it? That's, that's the million dollar question that I have. And if a lot of you are joining me on this challenge and are walking, I think you subconsciously agree with me because uh, there's just too much risk for that surgery in my opinion. Now, out of every 100 people that go through that surgery, 95 of them are probably just fine. But I guarantee you more than five out of 100 are having weird, bizarre, gnarly, uncomfortable side effects. Sometimes I think uh, fate, if you're a religious person, you might call it God, but I think sometimes fate puts us in a situation where, where you know, our true colors kind of shine through. And when we get put into a situation where all of a sudden we go from 250 pounds to 125 and all of a sudden you smile at people and they smile back, that could be really intoxicating, extremely intoxicating. It's probably the same thing that a lot of girls realize when they leave school in eighth grade, right, for the summer vacation. And then you come back and all of a sudden some girls have become women right all of a sudden they're wearing makeup as a freshman and everybody's like looking at them crazy like what happened to you and then you end up finding out she's going out with a senior now right these things happen and uh, I think it's just a part of our human nature so again if you could put in the comments what you think about that my thinking is if you're joining me on this challenge and you're still debating something like weight loss surgery then I am so proud of you to at least give us a chance. If you're getting weight loss surgery anyway, and your boss wants you to do these diets and you're just gonna be with me for a month to try to walk with me, hey, that's nice. But during that month, if you end up losing weight and you end up feeling like, hey, this is something I can do long-term, then I just urge you to contemplate and ponder it. That's all, you know? On another note, I uh, tried doing a video of all the foods that I eat compared to what I used to eat. And when I say used to, I'm talking just a handful of days ago, I'm talking about how I went from the sweet cereals like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Captain Crunch, uh, Tony the Tiger's, you know, what are those called? The Sweet Corn Flakes. I'm not a big Tony the Tiger fan, but I do like... Uh, his sugar flakes, I forget the name of it. Um, but anyway, I went from that to the boring bland cereals. I went from those to the plain cream of wheat and plain oatmeal. And these are things that if you are trying this route and you're on your third or fourth day of oatmeal, please put in the comments if you're starting to lose some of your hunger pangs because I think those hunger pangs are what make it really easy to say, I'm gonna make myself a bacon and eggs breakfast, right? I'm gonna make myself two bagels. There's so many ways that we can cut down on our food intake that won't make it so uncomfortable. For example, if you are gonna have a bagel with cream cheese, I mean, I like Philly cream cheese as much as the next guy. If you are gonna go that route, maybe you just have half a bagel and share it with, you know, the kids, the grandkids, you know, your husband, your wife, maybe you, maybe you share that bagel. When you go out to eat fast food with your coworker, since you've got a bottle of water and you're gonna eat the uh, burger, maybe you split your fries with your coworker and let them have your soda. These little things can make life uh, a little bit easier on you when it comes to weight gain and weight loss. You can take a walk every day, and by the way, it's morning, and the wind is blowing, and I wanted to come out without a jacket. I'm freezing out here. You think this is easy? Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe right away. I hope that you guys are starting to walk daily. I know sometimes I ask you guys about extra credit, but the reality is 
you guys might not be at the extra credit level yet. You might just be trying to get your 20 or 30 minute walk in. And if you're one of these folks that can only walk for 10 or 15 minutes because it's just impossible for you to, to do otherwise, then do it. Walk 10 or 15 minutes. If you can somehow arrange that 10 or 15 win minute window two or three times a day, I say go for it. It's better than nothing, right? From what I understand when I read the literature from our good friend Google, it sounds to me like for a walk to kind of take effect, it's got to it's got to be at least in that 15 or 20 minute window. So if you literally only have two or three minutes, that might be a great way to get used to walking, but I don't know if it's going to have any effect whatsoever. And that's where I go back to your steps at work. If your steps were continuous, they would be impressive. But if your steps are a 50 yard jaunt down the hallway to go to the restroom and a 50 yard jaunt to your car to go out to lunch, right? I just don't think those steps are worth anything because what happens at the end of the walk to the bathroom? You end up sitting on the toilet, right? The walk back to your desk, you end up sitting at your desk. The walk to your car, you end up getting in your car, believe it or not, right? So all those steps might as well be nothing, in my opinion, okay? If you do have an under the desk treadmill where your legs are churning, other than bumping your foot and you know hurting your, your foot like crazy, I think that's a good thing. So to my uh, person that commented and said, I have an under the desk treadmill, use it. That's, that's awesome, that's better than nothing. And if there's folks out there that have thought about getting an under the desk treadmill, apparently this uh, person that commented thinks that they're actually a pretty good deal. So I know you can pick those up for like 25 bucks or so from uh, walmart.com or Amazon. So yeah, go for it. I think anything that motivates you to walk, whether that's getting a dog or a puppy, I think that's a great thing. If your spouse walks every day, why don't you join them? You know, I guarantee you out of a thousand people that might watch a, a video, not that I have a thousand people watching all my videos because I don't, but if a thousand people watched a video about walking and they were contemplating walking, I'd be willing to bet about 40 or 50 of them have spouses that are already walking. They just haven't joined them. When I was married, my uh, wife, after giving birth to our son, she uh, got to the point where she was up above 200. And for a woman that's five foot three, you know, that's, that's quite a, a bit of weight. Not weight where we even contemplated weight loss surgery, but it was a weight where at the time I was walking because I had some cholesterol issues I was trying to walk off, right? Trying to be a cholesterol killer. And uh, I remember I would urge her to walk with me and I would get a little up, upset and frustrated that her answer was always an instant no. And then one day I asked her, I said, you know, we're married, I love taking a walk, you know as well as I do it would be good for your health because you know you have to talk to a person a certain way so you don't offend, right? And I'd say, I'm here for you, I want to walk, I'm very supportive, why don't we go for a walk? And she responded by saying, fine, let's go for a walk. And then she got outside and then while I was walking a pretty decent route, she was 10 yards ahead of me, walking a million miles per minute. You know, if someone's trying to help you, you don't always have to be, you know, anti-health, <laughs> you know? If your husband or your wife is urging you to go to the gym, okay, that might be a sign Okay, it might be a sign. It's not go to the gym or else you're gonna be single. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, you're turning down the, the ability to have a partner that already loves you and they want you to get healthy. Don't be upset with them when they ask you to go on a walk with them. Instead, grab your shoes and go on a walk. And with, when you're with them, you guys as a team can, can go into your think tank, right? Because a husband and wife, many times you guys have children. Many times you guys have bills. There's goals that are ingrained in us as parents when you have children. Number one, how are we gonna save up so our kids can hopefully go to the college or university, right? 
Those are things that when you're on a 30 minute walk with your husband or wife, you can discuss and go over, make a game plan. Hey, we've got six years. Why don't we find a way to put to get, put away two or 300 bucks in an account every month so that when it comes, you know, it doesn't hit us so hard, right? I, I think that almost every problem that we face in this country is something that if people just took some time to think about the pros and cons of, I, I think the problems would be a lot easier to tackle, you know? And again, if you're a, a person that knows they need to walk, don't necessarily rely on your spouse, right? So even though I'm telling you if your spouse wants to walk, go walk with them. But on the flip side, if you know you need to walk and your husband and wife says, I don't wanna do that, Joey, I don't wanna do that, Sherry, you need to be able to walk by yourself, right? Because your husband or wife, they might be perfectly happy and content with their weight, okay? And hey, big no-no. Don't try to force somebody that's out of shape into shape by giving them complimentary words like, you're fat, you're worthless, you're this, you're that. That never helps. And that's horrible. Because while they might have trouble with their weight, you have trouble with your mouth and your words. And trust me, that's worse, okay? And I've, I've been guilty of those things, not cruel things like that, but we all have a way of being cruel when we're in arguments, okay? and saying things that are unnecessary. And what usually ends up happening is when cooler heads prevail, we end up apologizing. But once those words are said, they remember those things, okay? So if your husband doesn't wanna walk with you, it might be because you've got an attitude problem, you know? And if you could admit that you're not happy with yourself, that could be part of the problem, you know? So. What you can do is make yourself a schedule. Say, hey, I'm gonna be walking these days. If you'd like to join me, I would love it. There's a lot of stuff that we can strategize over, make it sound like it's a fun thing, right? But again, if your partner says, I don't wanna be a part of that, don't try to force them. If your best friend Becky does not wanna walk with you, that does not mean she's not your best friend. Walking is seen as lame, boring, and ineffective by a lot of people. And it is to those people, okay? I don't see it as boring at all. I see it as completely effective, and I love doing it. So if no one wants to do it with you, I will. So I'm gonna be here every single day. I upload every day. I have a video that looks like it uploaded days ago, but it really was uploaded it was uploaded like two days ago, but it looks like it was uploaded five, so I don't know what happened there, but it ended up getting hardly any views, so no big deal. I uh, firmly believe that you guys have blessed me with a little bit of an audience here my very first week, and uh, there's something really wonderful about that. I, can, I just can't re repay you guys enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repay you by keeping my word, staying out here every day, recording my walk. I give you my promise that even if I didn't have the camera, I'm still walking every day because ultimately you do have to do this for yourself. But I don't like when people do things quote unquote for themselves because the reality is your children, your grandchildren, your family member and friends, should be all the reason in the world to try to be the best version of you, okay? And uh, sometimes our physical shape is super important. You know, if you're in a neighborhood and there's a suspect character following you on your walk, you know, it's kind of nice to know that you know how to run a little, right? <laughs> right? It's kind of nice that you know how to pull out the pepper spray from your purse and squirt somebody, right? So again, one of the things that I want to tell you, because it looks like three-fourths of my listeners are female and one-fourth are male, if you are in a suspect neighborhood, you know, maybe put a little pepper spray in your pocket, right? A little canister. Maybe uh, if you're a concealed carry person, you know, maybe have a gun on you. I don't know. But here's a better idea. Why don't you get in the car, 
drive two or three miles down the road to a better neighborhood, go to a park, and circle that park two or three times. Always try to make the best option available to yourself, you know? Because once again, I would really hate it if you're trying to take walks to improve your health and then you end up getting mugged, okay? There's nothing healthy about getting mugged, right? And that's the best way to totally traumatize the idea of walking for the rest of your life. If you go out and get assaulted or mugged on your walk, guess who's gonna quit walking? You, okay? We know that in a country with 330 million people, we know that every single day, heck, every single hour of the day, there are thousands of people being mugged and assaulted and murdered and this, that, and the other. Every single hour. And we could put that on the news nonstop. And sometimes I feel like the news does do that just to divide us, right? But I want you guys to find a good neighborhood. I want you guys to lose your excuses. I want you guys to eat bland food, not because that's what makes dieting so hard and difficult, but because that's our strategy. We want to have food that we can say, eh, no thanks. That's, that's the best thing. So let me tell you what happened real quick this morning when I decided to take my walk. Besides freezing because it's cold, right? I, uh, I took my walk knowingly before, uh, how, do, how do I say this? I didn't eat breakfast yet, okay? If you're eating breakfast and then taking your walk, ask yourself, is it possible for me to take my walk and then eat breakfast? Because even though that doesn't seem like a big deal, and in the grand scheme, it's not that huge of a deal, one thing that it definitely does is it starts to give you control over your food rather than your food having control over you. Now, let's say you walk for half hour, 45 minutes, and you come back home, and let's say it's a weekend so you don't have to go to work. Ask yourself this question, am I starving? Do I really need that bowl of plain, boring oatmeal that nobody in the world has ever craved? Do I need that, or could this be that first day that maybe I try this crazy thing called intermittent fasting, not because I'm starving myself, but because I'm really not that hungry? Look for the cues. If your tummy has that burning feeling that we get when we're hungry, then go eat, okay? But if it's not there, you don't have to eat, okay? Don't get in this mindset that, hey, I have to have three meals a day, otherwise my body's gonna lock up fat and never release it. Of course, that's true on the short term for a week or so, but eventually eating two meals a day and healthy snacks is gonna equate to pounds just flying off of your body. If Stephanie would have started at 250, said that she went through three, four, five weeks of hardcore dieting for her surgery to get down to 220, but ended up gaining weight and going up to 260, then you could say, my God, she might be a really good candidate to get this surgery, right? And with Wagovi and Ozempic, your insurance and your spouse's insurance, it might cover it nicely now, right? Where it only costs you a couple bucks a month. But if you lose your job and you change insurances, or if you end up uh, just losing your job period and you have to pay for uh, insurance out of your pocket and they don't cover Ozempic or Wagovi, then you're in trouble because what's gonna happen is you're gonna gain that weight back plus some, and oh, by the way, half the weight you lose is actually muscle weight. So we're talking, it's literally depleting you. Because in my opinion, and I'm sure a doctor will tell me I'm wrong about this, but I have a feeling when you see a 100 pound elderly woman that's maybe in her 80s, if she was in her 20s, she'd probably be 140 pounds, but you know as well as I do, as we age, we kind of shrink. And a lot of that is muscle loss because obviously they're not necessarily losing a bunch of fat. I never see a 90 year old, 300 pound woman. Do you? Okay, it's easy when we're young to get fat. It's not so easy to be fat when we're old. And remember, you're never gonna be as young as you are right now 
and you've never been as old as you are right now. So the best thing for you to do is to get your shoes on and go outside and join us on a walk, okay? That's just plain and simple. And if you're coming towards the end of your walk, which I am, my question to you is this. You know how easy it is to get extra credit done? Tell yourself, I'm not done yet, and go do that walk again. And then put it in the comments. I wanna know some people are doing extra credit. One of my uh, viewers put in a comment that they've been walking the last five weeks, like I think they said either two and a half or five miles a day for the last five weeks. If you try doing that right off the bat, not the, not the person that's doing that, she's already five weeks into it, or he is, whoever, I don't know the sex of the person. But if you try taking a half hour walk that I'm sharing with you, and you try creating a five mile walk, you're gonna get blisters and you're gonna get burned out, okay? The person that's into it five weeks already enjoys it, has already lost five or, or six pounds, okay? In your case, you're not gonna be able to do it. Can you do it? Yes, but I would recommend you build up to that, okay? And when you're walking five miles a day, I'm sure even the person doing it would say it's a little excessive, but I'd be willing to bet that they also had a goal. If your goal is doing a marathon or this, that, and the other, then you gotta take drastic measures. I'm asking you to take a drastic measure by doing more than 90 days. What I'm saying is, let's make this a part of our life, okay? There's really cool benefits to having the freedom with this. You don't have to walk every day. If today is one of those days you're taking off, but you're still observing drinking water and avoiding sugar, put that in the comments because I want our brothers and sisters to know that there are people that are actually trying this, okay? And some of you are going from sweet coffee to unsweetened tea. If you're drinking unsweetened tea, it tastes different than water, but it's not sweet, so I don't have any problem with it. If you're putting sweet and low in your tea, it's probably not affecting your weight negatively at all, but there's one problem. Tea with sweet and low tastes delicious, and it might make you uh, susceptible to more sweets. So that really depends on you. So have a wonderful walk, and please, just because I'm stopping, keep going. See you tomorrow.